Now, if you've done the ensemble work and you're ready to take on a principal role, this video is for you. My name is Adrienne Walker and I am a Broadway performer. I want to share with you what I've learned about the business so far. Welcome to 32 Bar Cut. It is my opinion, and I don't think I'm alone in this, that the ensemble is the heartbeat, the driving force, so one of the most important parts of every show. And the show would lack all of its gravitas without the ensemble. It would lack a little magic. And I have been in the ensemble many, 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 many times. It's how I started my career. Um, so nothing against the ensemble. Basically, that's my disclaimer for this video. As you know, if you know me, and if this is your first time watching one of my videos, thank you, welcome. Uh, I got my start in theater in the Chicago theater community, in the Chicago theater market. And in that market, I did a lot of ensemble work. In that market, I did a lot of understudy cover work. And because of that, uh, that, that period of time in my career where that's all I was doing, um, I learned a lot about the ensemble and I learned a lot about what it means to uh, work for it. <laughs> um, so um, this video is about how I made steps to uh, move to doing more principal roles and more principal tracks and, and everything like that. And if that's your journey and if that's what you want for your career, this is just how I made it happen for me. I want to share that with you. So when I first started out in Chicago, uh, I did a, a few shows and in each one, I was covering the lead in some way. So when I did Porgy and Bess, I was covering Bess. When I did Dream Girls, I was covering Michelle and Dina. When I did uh, Rent, I was covering Joanne. But I was also a perf in, in the show every night doing an ensemble track. And that is not for the faint of heart because when you are working in the ensemble and also covering someone in the show and you don't have the luxury, like you kind of do on Broadway to be swung out and take a look at the show, it, it can be a, a, a little nerve wracking to learn every single bit that that uh, principal player does so that you're ready to go on for them. And so what I, I made it my practice, and I think everyone should do this if you don't already do it. If you're covering a role and you're also in the ensemble and you have the privilege of doing the rehearsal process, you're not a replacement, but you're doing maybe regional theater and you're all rehearsing together. Whenever that principal track is called to rehearsal, you're called. Just make that your practice for the rest of your career. If your principal is called, you should be called because you need to write down whatever notes they're getting. You need to write down whatever blocking changes they're getting, anything like that that can help you be a better understudy, do it. It will also give you insight into what it is like to get that one-on-one -on -one time with the director that principals oftentimes get that ensemble players don't often get. It'll give you a little insight into that and get you prepared for that when you book your principal role. Uh, other things that I did, was um, during the, what we would do in Chicago anyways, for the time that I, I was covering those tracks is they would have a, a big put in rehearsal with um, all of the understudies. So we were all kind of just doing what we thought the principals were doing on stage every night, um, which can be, a, it can be messy, but for the most part, the show is there. And, and, um, and we're missing the ensemble, so we're hurting for the, the, the heartbeat of the show. But uh, whenever we would do those put-ins, I would really try to commit and really put everything I had into it because that was my only chance to really take on the role um, in a safe space. Whereas during the rehearsal process, the principals, they get a chance to play and, and, and kind of experiment until they lock in what they want their uh, their portrayal of those characters to be. Understudies don't always get that opportunity or really don't ever really get that opportunity. But um, so those are some things that I did when I was understudying and uh, working in the ensemble. Uh, when I decided that I wanted more and I still wasn't union yet, so I had opportunity to work anywhere. I didn't have to work at one of these union houses and try to vie for a principal track. I was able to work 
at non-union houses and try to get a principal track, which is way more feasible, which worked for me. Um, it's not everyone's journey, but it was way more feasible for me to attempt that first. So that's what I did. I went to non-union houses and I tried to get in on a principal track. So my first principal track was actually at a community theater in Hammond, Indiana. They were doing a production of Brooklyn the Musical and I booked the role of Paradise. And what's so hilarious about this whole thing is, is that I actually came out of pocket for this experience. Um, they, they were paying everybody a stipend and the stipend was didn't cover the expenses that I was accruing by taking um, the train down there um, for rehearsals and for the actual production. But I mean, it all worked out. I really, really enjoyed playing the role of Paradise. I had a ball and I got to meet Jeff and Kevin who owned the theater down there, the Toll Theater, and they were amazing and I, I feel like I've made lifelong friends with them. So it was all worth it. But um, it's just part of the long list of sacrifices I made to make my dreams come true, really. So um, that was my first principal role. It was at a, at a community theater and I, I basically paid <laughs> to be on stage. And then my second principal role was at a Mercury Theater. and. I was so shocked that they cast me. They saw something in me that I didn't see in myself yet. And so I'm so grateful to Eugene and Walter for that. But I did um, Mercury Theater's production of The Color Purple and I was cast as Suge Avery. And when I tell you I was so afraid to do this role, this over, uh, overly confident and hypersexualized woman who's just very um, secure with herself. Um, I wasn't there yet and it really stretched me and I was grateful to them for taking a chance on me because that was my first principal role at an equity house in the city of Chicago. So Mercury Theater actually gave me my, 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 my first real chance at this in a, in a, in a large scale. Um, so after I did that role, I did an understudy role at, um, Paramount Theater. I went in for Joanne. I didn't book it, but an amazing actress booked it instead, and I was her cover. And that's when I realized that I wanted more. After I got a taste of doing a principal role for a couple of times, I was like, how do I, how do I, how do I get these theaters who have only hired me as an understudy to see me as a principal? How do I get them to take a chance on me in this way? And so, um, what helped, I think, was that I got a Jeff nomination, which is kind of like Chicago's version of the Tonys. I got a Jeff nomination for uh, my portrayal as Suge Avery, and I think that kind of helped. Uh, so after that nomination, I started going into theaters that I had already worked for. So I had worked for um, Marriott Theater, I worked for Court Theater, I worked for Paramount Theater, and I went in again, and this time I had my eyes set on a principal track and that worked out for me in my favor when I went in for court theater again. So I'd already done two shows at court theater. The first was Porgy and Bess where I understudied Bess. The second was for Iphigenia and Aulis, which is a Greek tragedy um, and I was in the, the, the ensemble as the choir of women and that was such an amazing experience. But um, in that chorus of women, uh, Charlie, the artistic director and director at Court Theater, uh, gave me the responsibility of being the choral leader. So he and I had more time together and I felt like he was beginning to trust me more as an actor. And so my third time going in for Court Theater, I went in for the sequel or the next in the trilogy of these Greek tragedies um, called Agamemnon and I was going in for Cassandra and I was so nervous because I didn't know or didn't think that Charlie uh, could see me in a principal track but I I just went in and I gave it everything I had like I was I just threw myself into this audition and Charlie said something about how um, he saw me transform and I thought that was a good thing. And so then uh, he called me in the next day and I tried, it, it's so, it's so nerve wracking to be called back when you've gotten good feedback because you're so worried, or at least me, that you're not going to be able to pull it off again. But um, anyway, I was able to book that contract and I got a chance to become uh, Cassandra for this, uh, 
production of Agamemnon at Court Theater, a theater that I have respected for many, many years. And that was my second time getting to do a principal track in the city of Chicago at, uh, at a union house. And so I was very proud of that, very proud of that experience. And then I went in again for another theater that I'd worked for and they did not offer me a principal track. And this is when I had to really sit down and think. So um, if you've seen some of my videos, you know that I worked survival jobs and I was always trying to work as much as I could so that I could pay my bills, but also so I could build my resume. So when I went in for this particular theater and I went in for this their production, they came back with an offer for me, but it wasn't something I wanted. So the offer was to be in the ensemble and to cover four of the female principal tracks. And they were going to pay me the most I had ever made in a contract before in Chicago. I think the, the they were going to pay me almost 900 a week. So um, it, it definitely stung to say no, but I said no. And let me explain to you why I said no. I said no because um, I didn't want the responsibility of covering four tracks as well as learning and performing every night in my own track. I didn't want that responsibility. I didn't consider myself a swing and I didn't want them or anyone else to be confused and think that I considered myself a swing. And I also said no because I knew that I wanted something different. I wanted something different. And I'm using my words carefully because I don't want to say I wanted more because as I said in the beginning of this video, the ensemble is important. The ensemble is the heartbeat of the show. Swings are important. They have amazing brains and are able to learn several tracks and jump in and do them. And also I think that swings are some of the highest paid actors in shows because they have to be paid for every track that they know. Um, with that being said, I knew that I wanted something different and I had my sights set on it. And my agent, she was like, Adrian, are you sure? I mean, if anything, you can at least get your health weeks for doing this contract. And I said, no, I'm, I'm sure. I, I, I don't want this contract. And I said, no. And I thought that I would feel really terrible for saying no. But what I realized is that I felt powerful in saying no. There is power in deciding what you want for yourself and clearing out the weeds and staying on that course. And that's what I did with that first no. I had never said no to a contract before. And so I said no. And I'm very happy that I did because shortly after that, I booked the tour for Dirty Dancing. And then if you know my story, I booked The Lion King after that and it kind of just paved the way for my life to change. Um, and since then, I have realize that if you want to do a principal track, you kind of have to say no to um, ensemble work for a while so that uh, people can start seeing you a little differently. If you are tired of covering and you want the chance to have that role for yourself, you've got to say no sometimes and say, no, thank you, no thank you. I, I'll, I'll wait until you're ready to see me in a different way. Um, and that's that's what I learned from those experiences. And um, Austin recently wa uh, listened to this podcast um, with Matthew McConaughey, and um, I'll find the link so you can listen to it as well. But uh, he was tired of doing rom-coms. He was sick of it. He didn't see himself as that guy, but he kept getting cast in rom-coms. And we know Matthew McConaughey's uh, uh, filmography. He's a great rom-com guy. Um, but it kind of gave me insight into how actors can get pigeonholed. And so he wanted to do drama. He told his agent, don't send me anything unless it's drama. And he didn't get an audition for two years. He didn't audition for two years. And then he finally started getting the auditions that he wanted and he showed up and he showed them that he was ready for something different and that he had something else to offer. And then you start seeing him do these other roles, these other dramatic roles that we've seen him do and uh, get nominated for awards for. So um, that's my little spiel about moving, how I made the choice um, with, with a lot of um, 
<laughs> angst, <laughs> but also determination to move from an ensemble player to um, a principal player. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this advice helps you out or gives you a, a little bit of insight on maybe how you can and you can do that for yourself. But again, uh, being in the ensemble is pretty amazing as well. And so there, there's a path for everyone. There's room for everyone. If you want to perform and you don't care what you're doing as long as you're on stage, that's amazing too. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you next time.